Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine by AstraZeneca. There's been a lot of negative press about this vaccine lately, and I'd like to share the data behind some of these reports. And I'd also like to discuss how it may affect other COVID-19 vaccines as well. Several weeks ago, there were murmurings that the AstraZeneca vaccine was causing blood clots, especially in younger patients that were receiving the vaccine. Some countries were even so alarmed at some reports they were receiving that they discontinued the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine or have delayed its distribution. The AstraZeneca vaccine has not received emergency use authorization in the US, so it's not being used here, unlike the Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. But I still want to share information about the AstraZeneca vaccine because about 34 million people around the world have already received it, and because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses some of the same viral vector technology that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses. So does the AstraZeneca vaccine cause blood clots? How often does this occur? Why does this occur? If you're being offered the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, should you take it? Well, let's look at the data. To answer the first question about clotting, yes, the AstraZeneca vaccine has been linked to increased incidences of blood clotting. The numbers are very low when you consider that 34 million people have received it. But because vaccines are given to otherwise healthy people and they're not being used to treat an illness, we have a higher threshold to meet in terms of a safety profile. The European Medicine Agency, or EMA, which is like the FDA for Europe, published a statement on April 7th that acknowledged a possible link to very rare cases of unusual blood clots with low blood platelets but that the benefits of vaccination in protecting against COVID-19 outweighed the small risk posed by clotting. They did recommend that people under the age of 30 be provided other vaccines if they were available. So now that we know that there's a connection, how often is this occurring? Well, as of April 4th, there've been a total of 169 reports of clotting in the brain and 53 reports of clotting in the abdomen. There've been 18 deaths. And this is from data collected by the European Medicines Agency, which monitors vaccine safety within the European Union. But over 70 countries are currently using this vaccine, so the actual numbers are probably higher. Well, what are the risk factors? Most of the cases reported have occurred in women under 60 years of age within two weeks of vaccination. Two articles in the well-respected New England Journal of Medicine discussed specific cases. In the first New England Journal of Medicine article, authors reported on 11 patients in Germany and Austria, nine of who were women with a median age of 36. The clotting occurred five to 16 days after vaccination, and of these, six patients died. In the second New England Journal of Medicine article, authors discussed the specific cases of five healthcare workers in Norway between the ages of 32 and 54 years of age three of these five patients died. All of the patients presented in these articles presented with a similar tale of a low platelet count and blood clots in unusual places in the brain and abdomen. And the tragedy of these patients is that they were all completely healthy before receiving the vaccine. It really is heartbreaking. So what's happening? What's the cause of these blood clots? Scientists think that the patients that are at risk for this complication may carry an antibody that makes them susceptible to something called immune thrombotic purpura, or ITP. ITP is a rare autoimmune condition in which the body generates autoantibodies to its own platelets, causing low platelet counts, blood clots, and bleeding when the platelet counts drop very low. About 50,000 adults are diagnosed with ITP in the U.S. per year, and the risk is increased in young women and people with other autoimmune conditions. And since scientists are seeing this form of ITP after the COVID-19 vaccine, they've proposed calling it vaccine-induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia, or VIT. Thrombotic meaning clots, and thrombocytopenia meaning low platelets. 
scientists have discovered that these specific patients that have had VITT also have an unusual antibody called the platelet factor 4 antibody. What's strange is that most people develop this antibody only after they've received a blood thinner in the hospital called heparin. And even then, it's still really rare and only affects 1-2% to of people that receive heparin. And so scientists are scratching their heads as to why these patients have this platelet 4 antibody but have never been given heparin in the past. So something about this particular vaccination in these particular patients with this particular antibody against the platelet factor 4 is causing platelets to be destroyed, which causes an increased risk for bleeding and clotting. This combination of increased risk for bleeding as well as increased risk for clotting is a nightmare for physicians and can be deadly for patients. The possible cause is not known at this point, but it may be linked to the virus that's being used to transport the vaccine. The AstraZeneca vaccine uses an adenovirus from a chimpanzee. And this is where we all need to take note because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that's currently being used in the U.S. also uses an adenovirus vector to deliver its vaccine. Last week, the European Medicine Agency said that they're also looking at three cases of blood clotting that occurred after the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The agency said it had reports of three clotting episodes out of some 4.5 million people that have received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and they have not yet determined a cause and effect relationship. And of note, the Russian vaccine Sputnik and a vaccine from a Chinese drug maker, CanSino Biologics, also uses the adenovirus technology in their COVID-19 vaccines. And interestingly enough, ITP has also been seen very rarely with the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. And if this connection truly is there, then the adenovirus vector is not to blame since the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines use a different technology to deliver their vaccine. In February 2021, a case series was published in the American Journal of Hematology after a well-documented case of a Miami physician that received the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine and subsequently died from complications from ITP. In this case series, they discussed 20 cases. The report found that 17 of these patients did not have pre-existing low platelets, while the other three did. Patients' median age was 41 and 11 were women, but the report did state that since ITP occurs in 50,000 patients a year in the U.S., the 17 new cases is roughly com comparable to what would be seen if these cases were not related to the vaccine. And we may be somewhat more biased to finding these patients because we're having heightened surveillance of patients after receiving the vaccine. So the doctor writing the report did not think that there was a causal link between the vaccine and ITP. Of course, this assumes that all cases of ITP are being reported. But these cases seem to be different than what we're seeing with the AstraZeneca vaccine because these cases only had low platelets. The clotting in the strange places in the brain and abdomen were not seen like we're seeing with the AstraZeneca vaccine. So I think the ITP that's been seen after the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine is less concerning than the VITT that we're seeing with the AstraZeneca vaccine. So at the end of the day, I would still continue to encourage each of you to receive the Pfizer and Moderna and even the Johnson & Johnson vaccines. But if you're offered the AstraZeneca vaccine and you're a person under the age of 55, I would ask to receive another COVID vaccine at least until we get more information about what's causing these unusual complications. But after you receive any vaccine, be on the lookout for increased bruising or prolonged bleeding, or something called petechiae on the skin, and be sure to reach out to your doctor if any of these are occurring within two weeks of receiving your COVID-19 vaccine. Thanks again for joining me.